Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. I've been doing a course called Learn Outdoor Photography Tips on a Shoot, Essential Skills when I'm recording footage at historical sites for use in my videos. Skillshare allows you to explore your creativity and learn new skills, from photography and illustration to graphic design and more, and you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. Interested in making a career pivot or up leveling your skills, then Skillshare is the resource for you. Skillshare is ad-free. New premium classes are launched each week, and the entire catalogue is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, German, and Portuguese. There is something for everyone on Skillshare, and whatever course you choose, you will gain new interests and skills, or improve the existing ones you have. Join today. The first 1,000 people to use the link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Visit the link in the end screen today, and explore your creativity and learn new skills. During World War II, US and Canadian forces actually entered full-scale combat operations against each other in one of the conflict's most tragic incidents. It resulted in significant casualties and a great deal of recrimination. So where did this tragedy occur? The answer is a cold, windswept, often fog-bound island in the North Pacific, named Kiska, part of the Aleutian Islands chain in Alaska. Japan had attacked the Aleutians in summer 1942 as a diversionary operation as part of their Midway Island campaign. Midway turned into a complete disaster for the Imperial Japanese Navy, but in the north, Japanese forces managed to occupy several remote Aleutian islands. On the 6th of June 1942, a Japanese force of 500 marines had captured Kiska, followed by 2,000 army troops. The US determined to recapture its lost Aleutian territories, and instigated a series of amphibious operations. In May 1943, the island of Attu was recaptured after very fierce fighting with its Japanese garrison. Attu and Kiska's geographic positions controlled the sea lanes across the North Pacific. The Americans feared that the Japanese would turn the islands into strategic air bases from which to bomb Alaska and the US West Coast. The threat had to be eliminated. There was also the idea of using the Aleutians for US heavy bomber bases to attack the Japanese home islands. Attu fell at a cost of 549 Americans killed, 1,148 wounded, and a further 1,814 sick or died from disease, demonstrating the inhospitable nature of these exposed sub-Arctic islands. The operation to recapture Kiska, codenamed Cottage, would commence on the 15th of August 1943. Unusually for the Pacific Theatre, Cottage would be a joint US-Canadian affair. The US force consisted of the 7th Infantry Division and the 87th Mountain Infantry Regiment of the 10th Mountain Division. The Canadian 6th Infantry Division provided its 13th Infantry Brigade. There was also the 1st Special Service Force, a joint US-Canadian commando unit. The US knew that the Japanese garrison on Kiska numbered over 10,000 men, with anti-aircraft guns and some artillery. They expected a stiff fight. A significant naval bombardment commenced on the morning of the 15th of August, including almost 100 Allied ships, plastering known Japanese positions before over 34,000 US and Canadian troops began boarding landing craft. It was reported that the Japanese had carefully fortified the island with bunkers and tunnels and could be expected to fight to the death. Though some indications were received by the Americans that the Japanese had actually withdrawn from Kiska, US higher command ordered Operation Cottage to proceed, they believing that the Japanese had instead retreated into the interior of the island, in the mountains, to await the invasion. The landings were a bit of a mess. Though the weather was clear, vessels ran aground, and timetables were wrecked. There was no Japanese resistance. Fog then came down, reducing visibility as troops moved inland. Gunfire was heard all the time as soldiers shot at suspected positions, and explosions went off as Japanese booby traps detonated or people stepped on mines. Allied artillery continued firing into the fog and mist, adding to the impression that resistance was being met. 
At one point, U.S. and Canadian troops, advancing from different directions in the fog, bumped into one another with tragic consequences. Both sides were clearly seeing abandoned Japanese positions, expecting at any moment to run into the Japanese main line of resistance. Seeing figures moving in the poor visibility and unaware of the position of U.S. units, a jumpy Canadian soldier opened fire. The Americans, seeing unidentified figures firing on them, returned fire, believing the Canadians were Japanese. One of the problems may have been the helmets that both sides were wearing. From a distance and in poor visibility, the U.S. M1 helmet could easily be mistaken for a Japanese steel helmet. And for this operation, the Canadian forces had given up their British-style Brodie helmets and been re-equipped with U.S. M1 helmets. Again, U.S. forces, perhaps not familiar with Canadians wearing non-British-style uniforms, fired on them believing they were Japanese simply by the shape of these helmets. A full-scale battle commenced as both sides hammered the other. When identifications were eventually established and the firing was stopped, casualties were significant. The Canadians had killed 28 Americans and lost four of their own. A further 50 US and Canadian soldiers lay wounded. Japanese time bombs, booby traps and accidents killed or wounded many more soldiers on Kiska. The biggest single loss was to the U.S. Navy, when a stray Japanese sea mine collided with the destroyer USS Abner Reed, blasting off the vessel's stern and killing 71 crewmen and injuring a further 47. The island of Kiska was soon declared captured, but not one Japanese soldier was found anywhere on the island. U.S. intelligence had been right to be suspicious, for once the Japanese had decided to retreat rather than fight and had successfully evacuated the barren island, but somehow the invasion force had suffered 313 casualties invading an empty island, caused by an appalling series of friendly fire incidents demonstrating poor inter-allied cooperation and a series of clever Japanese booby traps which had taken the lives of many unsuspecting soldiers. None of this was reported in the press or newsreels at the time for obvious reasons, but Operation Cottage was an embarrassment of fairly big proportions for the US and Canadian militaries. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.